I started out part two of this build by cutting the table to its final length using my Makita cordless track saw. I also decided to take two passes with the saw on each end just to make sure I didn't stress out the motor as I tried to cut through this dense red oak. Next, I use my Makita Palm router with an eighth inch roundover bit to add a roundover to the top and bottom of the dining table. I definitely think this is necessary, especially with red oak as it's prone to tear out. It was then time to sand the top and the bottom of the table. I actually already used 80 grit sandpaper before this scene, but here you can see me using 120 grit sandpaper followed by 220 to get this to a smooth finish on the top and the bottom. During this project, the customer and I actually decided to add a chamfer to the ends of the table and I couldn't be happier with how it turned out. And though I had found some pictures, I was not sure how to accomplish this so I shot over to YouTube and found a great video by Blacktail Studio. I'll be sure to leave a link in the description. I followed along there, he made it very straightforward and it was super easy and left a professional look. As you can see here, I used my anchor T rule to draw a line, and then you really just want to overlay your track and find that perfect angle for your track saw. Make sure you're hitting that line and you're good to go. Hey everybody, quickly, I just wanted to show the layout that I'm doing right now, the underside of this table. Um, I'm going to be installing three C channels. I've marked them out. Um, my first ones here is in the center. Uh, my two outside ones are five inches in. These are both two inches wide. I got them at a big box store, so I'm going to have to drill some holes in there. Um, but for this project, I'm going to use threaded inserts uh, with some nice some nice bolts. Uh, I also laid out where my table legs were going to go because I'm going to use those same hardware bolts to attach my table legs. Uh, so just kind of want to lay this out, explain it. I'm about to set up my track with my router and cut these in, so stay tuned. For the initial C-channel groove, I used a quarter inch spiral bit with the help of a video from Jason at Bent's Woodworking. I'll be sure to leave a link in the description. I also used my Borla clamp as a straight edge for my portal cable router. Unfortunately though, I don't think the clamp had enough clamping force because as you can see, I was running my router through and along the groove and it actually pushed the clamp and I made up a little bit of a mistake. Fortunately, it's on the underside of the table, definitely a learning curve. So I went and grabbed my uh, Makita track and clamped that down and had no issues at all. And as you can see here, pretty good for a first try. I was able to get the C-channel in my grooves. With all my quarter inch grooves cut for the C channels, I swapped out my bit for a Freud surfacing bit, which I purchased a long time ago to help with flattening slabs that I never got around to. But it ended up being the perfect bit for this application and removed all the excess materials so my C channels would sit flush with the table.
As you can see here, I cut the inset for the seed channel a little long on both ends just to ensure I would have room for the table to expand and contract with the seasons. Next, I took my C channels over to my Harbor Freight drill press and began drilling my holes. I know you can buy pre made C channels with the holes already drilled, but in my opinion, significant cost savings if you just do it yourself. With all the holes drilled, I took the C channels back over to the table and used the bit as a punch to know where I needed to start my threaded inserts. For this project, I used quarter inch threaded inserts and furniture bolts. I'll leave a link in the description to both of those on Amazon if you want to pick those up, as well as a link to the countersink drill bit I purchased. So as you can see here, I used a quarter inch standard drill bit with some painter's tape just to make sure I didn't over drill the hole. I then came back with that nice countersink bit just to clean up the edges. With all my holes drilled, it was time to install the threaded inserts. I decided to use some tight bond 3 on the threads before screwing them into the table. Honestly, I've checked some forms and couldn't figure out if it was added strength or really just helped to ensure nothing stripped out. It all worked well for me though and didn't have any issues. Next, it was time to transfer over the holes for the threaded inserts to my table legs. I started out by pre-drilling all my holes with a small pilot bit, and then that brings me to the point where I tell you that I messed up. So after I drilled my pilot holes, I went back with a quarter inch drill bit and drilled all the way through the table legs just to make sure my furniture bolts could pass through. And that's where I ran into the issue. Because of the furniture bolts I'm using, they have a built-in washer, so I needed to use a Forstner bit to make a recess so you wouldn't see the furniture bolts once they were installed in the table. But because I used a quarter inch drill bit and went all the way through, it made it virtually impossible for me to keep my Forstner bit in line with the hole. Now, luckily I had this portable drill press jig that I bought for my drill three years ago when I started woodworking. I honestly couldn't tell you why I bought it, but it actually turned out to be a lifesaver. So to prevent this from happening to you, I would make sure to drill your pilot, pilot hole and then go back with the Forstner bit before you drill all the way through. With that fiasco over, it was time to add in more threaded inserts. I followed the same process as the C-channels and everything went together smoothly. And here's a quick clip of me being pretty much the best way I can say it is dumb. Um, I didn't wait on anyone to help me flip this table over. It was super heavy, but I was really eager to see what it looked like after I got these legs on. Uh, and as you can see, it turned out to be really just a controlled fall. So don't do what I do. Wait on someone. I could have damaged the table or I could have got hurt. So just want to make sure to call that out.
With all the prep work and sanding complete, it was time to move on to staining the tabletops and legs. The customer actually elected for a custom stain color on this project, so I did go back and forth with them, mixing some colors and sending them some photos. We eventually settled on this color, and I really love how it turned out. And I also want to call out this week's sponsor, which is Red Sun in Greenwood, Indiana. No, I'm totally kidding, but my buddy Mikey owns Red Sun in Greenwood. It's a great place to eat. Would definitely recommend the hibachi chicken with the yum yum sauce. It's awesome. So if you ever get the chance and you're in the area, give them a shout and tell them Nick Stoya sent you. After giving the stain time to cure, I then applied two coats of General Finish's oil-based satin top coat to the tabletops and legs. This is the first time I've used this product, and I was amazed with the results. I'll definitely use it in the future, and it will probably be my go-to in terms of an oil-based top coat moving forward. With all the finish work complete, it was then time to install the C-channels and table legs. I wanted to include this clip just so you could see the process I took for installing the furniture bolts into the table. As I mentioned earlier, I definitely snug down the center bolt in the center of the table, and the rest of the bolts, once I got them tight, I backed them off just a bit so that would allow the table to expand and contract. And with that, this concludes part two of our two-part series on how I constructed this modern oak dining table. I really hope you guys enjoyed the video and got some value out of this build process. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to leave them in the comment section below. As always, make sure to like and subscribe just so you can stay up to date on some new videos which I'll be releasing here in the near future. My name is Nick Stoya with Stoya Wood Design, and thank you for watching.